or in some ways a week for like, you know, the first few years I was there and just, you know, just absorb strength and learn greater. And he was, he was really a natural born, you know, teacher, whatever he wanted to be. And I was a paid teacher and I just hated it. So, you know, who, who knows? I was just lucky that um, uh, I kept trying to get out of it. Uh, first, I had, a, I, I got admitted to the University of Chicago to be, uh, they do politics. Not that I knew much about it, but I was studying hieroglyphics privately with some other guy and so forth. And I kind of did it, but you know, I had no money to go. This was back in '63 or '64, and so I that took care of that career. And then I, uh, uh, my roommate, my last year teacher, got me uh, a, a fellowship to go to Georgia uh, University, uh, studying foreign relations. And I, I didn't know anything about that either, but you know, but I took this fellowship, and I was all set to head out. And then two weeks later. I get a letter from Mort Weisinger, who was the uh, editor of the Superman line of comics at DC, offering me a, uh, a sort of a, a trial period coming up in the summer to be his assistant editor of all the Superman titles at DC. Through the alter ego, uh, early versions of the uh, early, of the alter ego magazine I wrote, and uh, most of the letters I wrote to another DC editor, Julius Schwartz, of Green Lantern, Flash, et cetera, who was, uh, uh, you know, who was a, a childhood friend, of course. And somehow he just hired me, and it took me about half an hour to decide that uh, I was meant for comic books and not to be a college professor or a God forbid, probably a diplomat, like Woody Allen used to say, in case of war, I'm a hostage. That was sort of what I was thinking. So I was just uh, one of these lucky people who just stumbled into uh, a career he actually liked. And then, you know, luck always has a factor. I mean, talent. Let's give you, I'm giving you a little, a little credit. Luck is, luck is better. <laughs> True. But, I see what you're saying. I was like, how do I become an English teacher? And how do I become Marvel and uh, uh, editor in chief at Marvel? At Marvel, it's uh, it, just just do what he did. <laughs> yeah. 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 Go back in time to 1963, and you know, just yeah. make friends with everybody. I do have a question. You you had mentioned Mort Weisinger. Um, I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, that was my question. How much of a bastard was he? That much. Bastard. No, really. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> very talented. Right man, he could write, he co-created characters like Aquaman, Green Arrow, yeah. Johnny Quick, quite a few others, Vigilante, but uh, just a very sadistic man. He liked to rally people, uh, even people who had been his friends since they were like teenagers, like uh, Otto Bender, who wrote a lot of the Superman, Supergirl stuff, and so forth. Uh, Otto, he told me that he was, was just a frustrated fiction writer. He couldn't really write fiction himself, so he liked to rally people. Actually, Mort did then have a bestseller once. He hired someone to write a book for him. He gave up the general plan and so he's writing for it, and it just says Mort Weisinger, yeah, and so forth. So, so but I mean, I was sorry, you know, when he when he died, because he was a talented man, and I was sorry we never had a chance to have a rough rough first rock between us. But I was working for him, and I would have kept on trying, worked for him the whole two weeks, one of which I was actually paid for. But once I met Stan Lee and he offered me a job, ten minutes later, he said, What do we have to do to hire you away from National? Which was what they called DC. And I said, Just just offer me a job. I hate it. Yeah, just get me away from this. this you know, so, so, I, so I take the job. I arrive back about half an hour late from my lunch hour because I had secretly sneaked over there when Stan asked me to go over uh, after I'd taken this little writing test to put some of the thrust on me. And uh, I go back, and Mort's trying to be nice because I think some of the people that are around there told him, says, you know, we don't think that Roy is the kind of person to take what your previous assistant did for two or three years to take the abuse. And uh, so Mark starts to be nice. And a couple of people said I've been being a little, you know, maybe a bit more hard in this and that. He starts talking to seven and five man just interrupt and said, Mark, I'm really sorry because, you know, I know I, I respect you, but I said uh, I just uh, I don't think we're suited for each other. And I've taken a job working for Stan Lee over at, at Marvel, which is a tiny little company compared to DC. But, and I said, but I told Stan that I can't start. I'll stay here another couple of weeks or several weeks, whatever you need until you can get your you know, get another assistant, you know, and so forth, uh, or whatever you want. And he said, you're a spy for Stan Lee, get out. <laughs> so 20 minutes later, I'm over at Marvel, and Stan's giving me, oh, I'm glad to see you back so soon. He gives me a million dollars, right, and that's it. The, the, the 